Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. And if you're in the Philippines, good morning to you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> my name is David Magdale and I am the uh, founder and president of David Magdale Associates. We are a public relations firm doing film publicity. Um, and we're just so excited to be here. Also one of the founders of the Asian Pacific Filmmakers Experience and one of the founders of uh, Open Your Eyes and Think MF which really stands for Monday through Friday, do the research. Um, we are so excited to be here. This is historic. We're making history. We call this the Filipino Filmmaker Takeover at South by Southwest 2021. We've got three films that we're highlighting today that won a narrative competition as the first Filipino in language film ever to be in, in competition at a mainstream festival in America. I'm just gonna say that, except for probably in our Asian film festivals, I'm pretty sure we've had those, but this is a pretty momentous for us, you know, at South by Southwest. And that's Islands from director Martin Edrelin and producer Priscilla Galvez. And by the way, the lead actor was honored with a special jury prize for breakthrough performance for uh, Rogelio Balactas. I think we're related. I've got Balactas people in my family, so I'm sure we're related Rogelio. But that's, that's amazing. And then in the narrative spotlight, we have the fabulous Filipino brothers written, directed, and starred uh, by Dante Bosco and of course the Bosco brothers. Um, and so they're in the narrative spotlight. And then in, our, in the shorts program under Texas short, shorts, we have Kayla Galang uh, who has her film, Learning Tagalog with Kayla with Kayla. And so we're really happy you know, that we have Kayla. So we have different generations, different uh, levels of uh, professionals and experts who are just here. So we're just here to celebrate. Let me uh, throw over to Larnie Dakanai to say uh, a welcome from the Asian Pacific Filmmakers Experience. Larnie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Kamastika to my fellow Kababayan. Thank you so much for joining us for this historic day and moment. Um, it's been a rough week for all of us. And I just want to say on behalf, I'm a, my name again is uh, Larnie Roska Dakanai. I'm one of the co-producers of the Asian Pacific Filmmakers Experience. Um, I am also a founding member of NBC's Asian Pacific American Employee Resource Group 14 years ago. I helped to launch diversity at NBC um, uh, 14 years ago. and continue to be in this fight, not just for Phil Lambs and Pinoy's Pinoy's around the world, but for all of our marginalized communities and um, underrepresented communities. So um, I just want to say on behalf of the Asian Pacific Filmmakers Experience, thank you for being here. And please, regardless of where you are, no matter uh, where you are in, in you know, the, the world of media, entertainment, storytelling, raise your voice, use your voice, elevate other voices, bring others along. And I have to throw back to some history. Look at what our Manangs did. Look what Larry Italong did. He stood with Silver Chavez in the fight for rights, for farmers' rights, right? And we need to do that in this moment to show more solidarity, unity across our Filipino community, but across the wider Asian American and Pacific Islander community, and again, across all marginalized, underrepresented communities. So with that said, have a wonderful discussion, and please, peace and much love, mahal to all of you. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm going to throw it to Vince Johnson, my colleague, and he's going to do a little welcome on behalf of our platform, Open Your Eyes and Think MF. Hit it, Vince. Yeah, I don't want to say too much, but just thank everybody. Um, open your eyes and think MF. Um, there's a little side project that um, David and I started uh, last summer during pandemic, and uh, we've just been using it as a platform to, you know, elevate filmmakers and storytellers that aren't getting opportunities through normal distribution platforms and channels. And um, yeah, it's just really exciting that we're able to put this all together on a Saturday morning. And I don't know, I've been spending most of quarantine in Sacramento with my mom, um, eating a lot of Filipino food and just, I don't know, it's been really nice. It's, it's a blessing in some ways to, to connect with her again. Um, so 
I don't want to, again, I don't want to say too much, but I want to welcome our moderators. Um, I don't know, David, do you want to welcome them? Do a quick yeah, I, sure thing. I just want to say thank you so much uh, for PJ Raval, award-winning, Austin-based documentary filmmaker who just kicks it out the park all the time. He's also a member of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. And we have a really good story. I was walking him on the red carpet one year at the Oscars and we're trying to go upstream to go get his photo taken for, I think it was for Philippine News or the Inquirer because he was on the red carpet for Trouble the Water. And who do we run into? but the backside of Beyonce. And we had to stop because we almost ran her over because we were trying to get up and we, boom, we ran into her. So two Texans got together right there on the red carpet. So please welcome PJ Raval. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I should also mention, uh, we were also between Beyonce and Queen Latifah. Oh yeah. So two queens. <laughs> <laughs> there were four queens all together. Uh, it, was a, it was a night of royalty on the red carpet. <laughs> Um, also, to I just want to say welcome to Erica D D Diperine Sugars, who I just met this time, this first time now through PJ, and she is over over at the Austin Film Society. Welcome, Erica, and thank you so much for coming this morning and celebrating with us this momentous occasion for the Filipino filmmaker takeover of South by Southwest. Of course, thank you so much for inviting me um, and for PJ to, to wrangle me in, my Filipino Austin brother. Um, so hopefully it will be a really great discussion. But yes, I am with the Austin Film Society. I've worked with PJ at, through the Austin Film Society, but also in other work that I have done as a funder and as a programmer of film um, for the last 20 years. So it's really been great to be invited to celebrate, really celebrate um, an occasion with my fellow Filipino brothers and sisters. With that said, I think we're going to start this panel um, with acknowledging that, yes, this is a celebratory moment. This is really a joyous occasion. We're here to celebrate the films and the filmmakers. But I think it's important for us to acknowledge the actual um, time period that we are in and, and the rest of the world and, and what's happening, right? So I think with this being specifically a Filipino um, and Filipino diaspora based conversation, um, seeing how many of us, right, have um, uh, ancestors that have been traumatized by settler colonialism, generations even till today dealing with um, effects of US imperialism, colonization, you name it. I think it's extra important for us to do a land acknowledgement. And so I'm gonna put in the chat window uh, a link in case anyone who's joining us um, would like to do a land acknowledgement on their own. Um, panelists, you're welcome to also. But I just want to acknowledge that I am joining you from the ancestral lands of Jumanas, Tonkawa, Lapan Apache, um, and the Comanche, which is now known as Austin, Texas. Um, um, and they have been stewards of this lands for generations. Um, I think it's also important for us to um, show some um, honor and solidarity with um, the women who were victims to the shooting in Atlanta. Um, and I want us to acknowledge that the use of our term Filipino, um, I hope is coming from its original intended um, term, which is an all gendered term, right? For people joining us who maybe who don't know, um, pre-colonial times, the Philippines really embraced non-gendered uh, terminology, and it's only through a Western lens and through colonization imperialism that the O in Filipino has been steered towards a masculine. The, from my understanding, the original intention is all gendered. And the reason I think it's important to say that is because if we are using the word Filipino, I want panelists to feel free and comfortable to use whatever term they feel best works with them. If it's Filipinx, it's Pinoy, it's Filipino, whatever you want to use, but that we're not upholding any kind of male supremacy and trying to do any kind of erasure of women and female identified individuals um, hailing from the Philippines or Philippine diaspora. And then lastly, um, I do think it's a, it's a time period where it's us to honor um, immigrants, right? And stories of immigrants and the fact that we're talking to Filipino uh, US-based and Canadian-based, North American-based uh, Filipino filmmakers um, that we honor immigrant stories. So I want to encourage people also in the chat window to share um, a little bit about your families. And I will start saying that 
My parents both hail from the Philippines. My dad uh, immigrated from uh, the WAG, he's Ilocano, went to New York City in the late 60s. Um, my mom is also from um, Ilocano, so or Iloco, so I'm double Ilocano. Um, whatever that means to any of you out there, you better watch out. Um, and my mom immigrated to Canada first and lived in Toronto for many years and then um, eventually immigrated to um, New York, met my father there and the rest is, you know, history. So anyway, I know that was a lot, but um, I just think it's important for us to situate um, our conversation and who we are in this moment. So I'm going to hand it over to Erica now. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, PJ. Um, so we're going to do this little co-hosting thing back and forth. So bear with us. If it's anything like my Filipino family, then we will talk over each other and correct each other <laughs> um, in front of everyone. But having said that, um, I, I do want to acknowledge the land that I'm on. I'm actually calling in from um, New Orleans right now. I'm actually um, where I grew up um, visiting some family here. Um, and that is the, the lo largely the Chinamata tribe um, is the large tribe of Louisiana that still exists today. But um, I am based out of Austin um, and my parents uh, both immigrated from the Philippines in the 70s, early 70s, um, from my father from Cebu and my mother from Pampanga. So I've got a north-south connection. Um, and so I want, I know that David introduced everyone, but I will uh, just quickly introduce them again so they can come up on screen and, and maybe say a little bit about themselves, introduce themselves. And I think in the chat, we'll put links to some of their other work, but um, as a programmer, I felt like it was really amazing as, as I look at um, going to festival and attending and seeing what films are there to actually see, you know, these three films pop out to me immediately <laughs> as, wow, these are really great Filipino voices um, in such a large sort of mainstream festival. And I just wanted to, uh, I was going to watch them all anyway, but it was really great so that I'd be in a conversation with everyone. So. Kudos to all, congratulations. And so as David said, uh, Islands was in the narrative competition. Um, Martin Edgerlin and uh, Priscilla Galvez are here with us today um, to talk about that. The Fabulous Filipino Brothers, uh, written and directed by Dante Bosco, um, and he's here. And then Kayla Galang, Learning Tagalog with Kayla, which is a short in, incredibly, the text is short, which I was excited to see. So um, welcome to you all. Um, and then I don't know if we wanted to have Martin and Priscilla, do you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit and, and maybe say, you know, acknowledge your immigration story? Sure. Thank you so much, PJ, Erica, for your introduction. Um, I'm Priscilla Galvez. I'm based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, in celebration and in honor of immigration stories, um, my family immigrated from the Philippines in 1994, and we immigrated to Guelph, Ontario. My mom still lives in Guelph, and my dad lives in Cambridge, and I'm in Toronto. And yeah, and uh, I haven't been back to the Philippines, so hopefully there's an opportunity for me to go back to the motherland. Um, I am uh, one of the producers of the feature film Islands, um, which David introduced so, so beautifully. Um, and it was written by, written and directed by Martin Edgerlin, who is my producing partner. And I'll let him introduce himself now. Uh, yeah, my name is Martin Edgerlin. I'm the writer, director, and producer of Islands, um, also in Toronto. And um, my parents, my mother is from Quezon City. My father is Elicano, um, but they met in Manila and came to Toronto in 78 and me and my siblings were all born in Toronto. Dante, you wanna jump in there? Yeah, how you guys doing? My name is Dante Bosco. Uh, from the Fabulous Filipino Brothers. I'm, uh, I'm from Los Angeles, but right now this weekend, I'm, I'm actually with my whole Filipino family at my sister's birthday weekend in Palm Springs, which is the land of the Kabila. But our family immigrated to America years ago with my grandparents. World War II veterans on the Army side and on the Navy side. My dad's side's from Pangasinan, 500 Islands uh, is that whole tribe. And then my mom's side uh, from Zambales, from Iba. So, uh, and I've been going back and forth a lot to the Philippines and part of me be becoming an adult artist was reconnecting and with the homeland, but also the art scene in the homeland and, and the filmmakers and the actors out there. And so, uh, you know, 
I got to shoot there for this particular film. And uh, but we're from Pittsburgh, California, which we also got to shoot the, the movies about our home, our hometowns. And that's Pittsburgh, California. Pittsburgh with no H in the Bay. Awesome. Kayla, you want to go? Hi, yeah. Um, my name is Kayla Budica Lang. Um, I'm based in Austin, Texas on occupied um, Tonkawa and Comanche land. Um, I guess I feel like my immigration story is very like all over the place in that um, my dad's from Pampanga and um, Pangasinan and um, moved to the States, to Houston actually, um, when he was 12 and eventually enlisted in the military and um, got stationed, I think, in Alongapol, um, where I met my mom, who's from Eastern Zamar, um, and they had me, and I came to the States um, six months later, so it's been here since. Can I also, I just want to jump in before we go on to say that uh, we didn't do our land acknowledgement, and we are on the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabeg, including the Chippewas and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Back to you, PJ. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, I guess I'm gonna kick it off with the first question, um, if you guys are okay with that. But I thought uh, maybe if each of you could share a little bit about you know, your background, but specifically thinking about um, how your Filipino upbringing inspired this particular story, right? Or this particular film. And I guess we could start with, why don't we start with uh, Martin and Priscilla? Uh, yeah, so this is my first film featuring Filipinos, and um, it came from, you know, thinking about my parents getting older, but I think um, it's like the house and the, the, the house that the film takes place in and the relationships between the people, it's, it's sort of how I grew up, like the house is like the houses I've lived in family, friends, um, and, you know, like the, the father in the movie is very close to what, how I remember my grandfather. Um, I think there's just, there's, when you're making a narrative Filipino movie, there are so many things that I think Priscilla and I did that you don't really think about, you know, it's, you just sort of, you're writing from your life and there's not so much thinking. I'm thinking about plot, of course, but as far as character and, and what a house is gonna look like, like all of that is so natural. Um, I don't know, Priscilla, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, I think, um, I think it was interesting and I, it was an interesting experience um, making the film with Martin because even like to the set design, I think there's a lot of our family furniture and, decoration and and like religious memorabilia and and there's there's just so much that you like I couldn't imagine have like being able to like participate in, in any other sort of film and I've done a lot of like indie shorts and like features and like I usually like you know a bookcase that I <laughs> I own I'll like lend to production because we never have enough money but it was so nice to like basically go to my dad's basement um, and, and just like grab furniture that that we've had since since we immigrated in 94 potentially and like you know like I, and collected over the years so I think that that was interesting and I think through casting to as a unique experience of casting a, a, a Filipino cast and and having those characters be so familiar to the characters in, in our lives like growing up um, as an immigrant in Canada. So, so yeah, so like, I can't really speak to, to like the development of it, but in, in producing it and, and creating it with Martin, I think that was really special. Thanks for that. How about you, Dante? Yeah, I mean, my film, you know, The Fabulous Filipino Brothers is a, you know, we, it's really, it's a really pop film and we, we thought of this as a very, kind of pop film with these brothers and a lot of people, especially Filipino community in the States and whatnot grew up with us uh, from, since we were young and saw us grow up. And so now we're like all in our forties and be like, all right, well, let's do a movie. And we actually just leaned into the Filipino part, but we named the film, the fabulous Filipino brothers, like let's not shy away from who we are. And, and when you watch the film, 
I think it's a very Americana film and a very family film. But that being said, every detail that we are of being Filipino is in the, the film. Like our grandparents, our family, the food, things that uh, we may not, I, as we were shooting, we didn't really overthink it. It's just like, that's what it is. Like we're eating Longanisa, that's what we're eating. That's what we're doing. And, uh, and I, you know, you're talking about our Filipino culture just being featured in the film. It's just, that's how we are. That's what's going on this morning. We just ate Longanisa for breakfast. I mean, that's part of what it is. And it, it was fun to do it because all my brothers and the, the producers that came on just kind of understood our culture and understood we're making a pop film. We just happened to be Filipino. And uh, hopefully, you know, people can kind of experience it and just, just understand. It's ironic, that, you know, the more details we get personal about ourselves, the more universal it actually becomes. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Filipino stuff in the film that I don't even think about till later on. They're like, oh, that's so Filipino. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the, that's just the boys being the boys. But it was also very important for me to kind of show four different leads Filipino leads and be very distinguished and brothers and just to kind of understand that we are not interchangeable even within the same family we are very unique individual personalities and four different complete vignettes really giving each vignette a different kind of feel and taste and tone um, just because you know in this industry we are always whether it be Filipino or just Asian American or just ethnic it's like sometimes we had classed all in the same place and it was really important for me to try to delineate and get an audience to understand like four different people that may look the same that may be from the same culture but totally completely different folks and so hopefully people can see that and enjoy that and, and enjoy you know the fabulous filipino-ness of it all I think people definitely get that, the fabulousness <laughs> of the <laughs> Filipino brothers. Um, how about you, Kayla? I mean, both you and Dante star also in your in your own projects. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, your upbringing, how it inspired that, um, and maybe even adding in there um, the, the decision to star in it also. Yeah, um, so actually um, the project came about when a friend asked me to participate in um, a project called Us that Austin Sunset Public Programming, um, which is like a community art showcase. Um, and so I initially had this idea of like learning Tagalog on screen and like a public access like aesthetic um, because I've never, I don't speak fluent Tagalog. Um, it was never taught to me, um, not, you know, by fault of my parents. I understand why they didn't teach me. Um, but I think I just wanted to, I think, kind of like reclaim like my, the possibility of me being able to learn it um, even so late in adulthood. Um, and I'm really excited to learn it. Um, and I'd say, yeah, just because like it, I, it was like a community art showcase. Like I figured like, I'll just be scrappy and make what I can at home and be present with what's here with me. Um, so I just made a film with me and my roommates and hope for the best. <laughs> I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Out of curiosity, how many people here have said to their parents, you know, I don't speak the language because you never taught me it. Does anyone? I definitely <laughs> have had that conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, have, I have the opposite conversation, which is we tried to teach you and you just didn't want to learn, which is like, yeah, but I was like 10. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, had other I tell my parents that they don't even. <laughs> my parents don't even speak Tagalog. They're like, I was like, you couldn't teach me because you can't even speak it yourself. Right. They but they're like, we understand. <laughs> we understand. We understand. I'm like, mm, I don't kind of understand. I just, I just had a strict mom, and I couldn't get away from it. <laughs> no, with my parents, it was more the thing like they just didn't want us to have a hard time in school. But, you know, I mean, now we sort of realize that kids, you could teach them four languages when they're kids and they're, they'll be fine, you know? Yes. Well, it's the sort of adaptability or, you know, blending in part of, I think, the immigrant, you know, our immigrant story for sure that I think both Dante and, and Martin, you bring into your film to certain degrees. But um, I also want to think about um, audience, right? So the audience that you had in mind for the 
film that you've made here. And again, like I said, seeing it in a more sort of uh, a, a widely known um, and wonderful festival like South by Southwest versus, you know, routes that one would take or, or you would see most of these films, particularly for a concentration of Philippine, um, American, Philippine and Canadian films in like an international Asian American festival. And those are really wonderful. And we've got some really fabulous ones too. But um, what was, what was this, who did you want to see this film? And, and did South by Southwest somehow fit into that strategy? Or how did it fit into the strategy? Um, Kayla, I'll, go, I'll start with you first, because it's a short film. So I'm curious. And it's, it's in the Texas short category. So I'm <laughs> curious who you thought the audience was going to be. It's, it's interesting because like I literally thought my audience would just be my friends. <laughs> um, and I had no immediate plans to submit it to anything until I was encouraged by my friends to submit it. Um, so it's interesting. I didn't really have any audience in mind, but um, since being at the festival, I feel like I've connected with so many people. Um, and I've been so surprised to see how much people have related to, I guess sort of like being in between in a way, just because, um, Sometimes I feel like I'm not Filipino enough or like I'm not, I know, because I don't know the language or because I'm here in Austin, Texas, away from my family. Um, there's a sense of disconnect and I just wanted to show, I guess, like my friends and community what it's like to stand at that sort of intersection. Um, yeah. Dante, what about you? The audience i mean besides your family <laughs> you know my yeah definitely the audience my family like i said like we we grew up in the industry my whole family and we've been in the industry for over 35 years and um of course we made it for the filipino community we all love being uh you know it feels like a lot of people especially from our generation grew up with us and so when we meet the filipino community around the world they're like you're the family we kind of grew up with and which is awesome and but also we we grew up in this industry and we also intend the audience for to be the audience abroad you know it's really like you know there's this thing back in the 90s it was like especially from the african community called fubu like for us by us and i was always like it's really you know there was a mistake in that mi mindset for me it was it's by us for all and that was how the movie was and particularly with me and my brothers crafting these characters in hollywood you know you don't always get hired to do the things that you can do. And it doesn't matter if you're Filipino or Asian or not, white, black, Hispanic, it, 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 everyone. You, most actors only get to do a fraction of what they actually can do. And the wonderful thing about my brothers is we've studied together for over 20 years. I've seen every single performance every one of these guys has done in their whole life, as they have seen mine. Every acting class, because we studied together in class, every theater piece, every television show, every movie. And so I also know the stuff that they have, that Hollywood has not hired them to do yet. And part of that was my kind of like urge to kind of make this movie and really crap characters and have them be the leads of their own vignettes within a movie and really let them be the leading man, really let them fall in love, really let them get their, broke, their hearts broken, really have let them get into a highly crazy sexual food relationship scene. Like, I mean, things that, that I've seen them do that like Hollywood's just not willing to give a Filipino guy to do in any capacity at the moment. So one of our things is like, let's put it out there and let's let the world see. It. We definitely hope our community appreciates what's going on, but we also hope that the community at large, the Hollywood community, the white community, the African-American community, the Latino community understands who we are individually, but also understand the Filipino culture more like, oh, okay, like that's crazy and cool, but see themselves within what we're doing too. So hopefully uh, the audience is large. We won't always want it for a large audience. Great. Martin, Priscilla, same question. Um, I guess I was just thinking about the like art house film audience just because of the kind of films I make they're they're a bit slower maybe heavier and so you know we were actually looking at premiering the film in Europe um, but when we got the invite from South by it, it took a while for it to sink in because I was like I don't know if this is the right place um, but now it it really feels like it is and I mean to be a part of this year with with Dante and Kayla here is amazing with 
everything that's happening right now in the media just feels like this couldn't be the better place and the better time to be, to have a film like this at South by Southwest. Um, and also I think what's been like, we were thinking about the Filipino audience for sure, but because our cast skews older, it's like middle-aged and senior, I was thinking of maybe that audience, but what's been shocking to me is it's actually been the younger audiences, like, you know, the generations that grew up or were born in North America, Canada and the US, that I think, you know, we're, we're probably craving Filipino things, you know, art, yeah. film, TV, more than our parents or, or grandparents might be. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting too because I think there's a space that's opening up or maybe that needs to be filled where it's it's again like related to the immigration story or like it's about uh, and and it was interesting with islands because there was an arg like a little bit of a negotiation with our like national funder funding body that 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 gave us a grant for the film about the language in which the film had to be in. And I think it's interesting, like even with Dante and Kayla's film, like we are that hybrid sort of identity, right? Like we we are American Canadian and we're also Filipino. And I think there there is that space there that is exciting to think about like who is that audience for? Because when you think about world world cinema, it's like, there are like Filipino movies, but there aren't like Filipino hyphen. I mean, there are, but like to expose that to the mainstream, I think that's like super exciting. I want to follow up on that. I mean, I love the idea that, um, you know, the two of you are, are coming from, from Canada also, right? So this is not Filipino American, this is Filipino North American, right? And, and if we think of that, we're also, you know, we can also think of this as these are, fil you know, films from like the Filipino diaspora, right? Like films being made outside the Philippines from people of Filipino descent, um, you know, in various, um, you know, immigration and migrant stories. So I, I, I kind of, want to ask all of you, or not kind of, I will, I'm asking all of you, um, if you could talk a little bit about just even your concept of what is a Filipino American or North American or Filipino Canadian film. Like, what does that mean to make a Filipino diasporic film? Um, and how is that different from a just more general and broader, like Asian, you know, Asian American, Asian Canadian filmmaking? Like, what makes it specific to do you think of the Filipino um, experience, if that makes any sense? And why don't we start with um, uh, Dante? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, well, Filipino film, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like it's from our perspective, right? Cause we, we grew up in Hollywood and we watch all these Hollywood films and all the roles I've ever played in my life, most of them and every person in Hollywood. And I've said this before, up until now, pretty much, like 99% of all the roles were written from a white male's perspective. That's Hollywood was built on a white male's perspective. All the roles, we, including Rufio, including, and it's not, doesn't make anything false. It doesn't make anything racist. It just makes it from that person's perspective. And it's been, the problem is it's been 99% of the, of the content out there for a hundred years. And so in this new age of media, it's our, our perspective of our own lives. And even, the, even our perspective of them, white male, African-American, it's, it's from our perspective. Like that's, that's the Filipino story written by Filipinos. Like basically write what you know. We're always gonna write what you know. That's, that's a one thing that you, we have. And being a Filipino-American, it's like no matter what I write about, it's gonna be a Filipino film because that's from my, my perspective. And, that it's very unique and it's different as I've been going back to the Philippines about who you know Filipino Americans or Filipino North Americans are compared to the Philippines. I grew up in the Philippines and speak of, I'm very loved and very welcome there. And I, and I love being a part of that community, but I'm definitely, there is a disconnect. They're like, you know, you are way more American than you are Filipino to a degree. And I'm learning as an adult to like reconnect and, and I let that influence my film by, by one of my, my, my character going back to the Philippines and experiencing the Philippines as a Phil Lamb and trying to help tell that story. So, I mean, I don't, the difference between the films are, 
if it stars Filipinos, it's a Filipino film, period. To have Filipino <laughs> faces is important to understand that we're people that are experience all the same emotions and, than, as everyone else. Of course, we kind of know that cerebrally, but until you actually see it and experience it. And one of the joys of, of my career is meeting other Asian American actors, meeting other Filipino filmmakers saying, seeing me as a child in a Steven Spielberg film was like, like a, a high, a, like just a, a moment where it just kind of enlightened them that we are a part of this grand thing called Hollywood and we, and we haven't been. And that's kind of like, you know, so I, I mean, as far as what are we doing to make Filipino films is put Filipinos in films to, to, to have experiences that, to explore the human condition. I mean, and we just happens to be, I can do Filipino American film because I'm Filipino American. I really can't do a Filipino film from the Philippines because even if I go there and shoot a film, which I have done, produce a film, I'm still coming at it from a Filipino American perspective because that's my experience, you know? Well, I guess, I think, I, you know, I just want to, I'm going to add a little bit to this question too, because I do think um, sometimes um, mainstream audiences, the media, right, they, they treat Asians as a monolith, right? As if, as if, it's interchangeable between Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino. Whereas we even know just even Southeast Asian is so vastly different from East Asian, right? So I'm wondering, um, thinking about each of your stories, what makes it unique, you know, to that perspective of, you know, someone from the Philippines? Like, cause I, cause I would argue each of them could not be interchangeable, right? Like this could not be the fabulous Korean brothers, you know, for instance, right? Like there's something that has to be very specific to the idea of, um, yeah, the Filipino it'd, be, identity. It'd, be, it'd be a whole different film. I mean, when you watch my film, it's 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 very it's very Filipino in its own way. It's very Pittsburgh, California. It's very like Bay Area, and it's and then if you know the family, it's very Bosco. Like that's like you watch the Bosco brothers, and like okay, that's the people that 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 know us are like that's so your family. The way you kind of created the film and each person's personality. I think you. You know, when you're filmmaking, and I'm sure that everyone can talk to this, it's like a, a very personal experience. And it's little by little, you put your DNA in that, that movie. It just so happens my DNA is Filipino-American from Pittsburgh, California, one of five brothers and sisters. And like, and what does that put in the world? I mean, that it's all in that film. And then family, it's all about kind of the love of family. Um, which I think that same thing in Martin's film too, is like this very strong family influence. And I think these issues, and they're universal. The, the, the irony is they're universal. You know what I'm saying? When we watch this movie, well, I was watching all these like Italian films, right? Like The Godfather and Moonstruck. And I love these films and they're so Italian and they seem so Filipino to me. Like I'm watching this movie, like they're hella Italian, but they seem Filipino. So I think, I can't, I know it's just hard to distinguish like, infusing what we infusing it does make it universal i know i keep going back there but it's just a weird thing but it's just i don't know i we're so filipino sometimes now you don't even think about it but i think that's a beautiful part of filmmaking if you can really infuse what you're doing without even understanding it because it's just comes natural if you're free enough with the producer to let you do things that they may not understand but like believe me that's spam and rice that's what we're gonna do that that's what we do. <laughs> for sure. And, you know, and your film and, um, you know, Martin and Priscilla, your film, you know, they both feature uh, multi-generational households, right? Which I think for me is very much, you know, very Filipino um, culture, um, you know, kind of uh, structure. So I'm wondering if you could speak to that, uh, Martin and Priscilla, just, um, you know, what is the Filipino-ness, you know, of your film? Um, what do you think, you um, in its unique point of view or storytelling, you know, do you think you explore? Well, I mean, I, I totally agree with Dante, like who you are is inseparable from what you're gonna create, you know, like your, your experiences, whether it's your, your ethnicity, your age, your sexual preference, whatever it is, like those are all gonna be part of your voice, whether you're writing about Filipinos or white people, or if you're, making an alien movie like your experiences are going to be in whatever you create um and i think at least for our film i think the human experience a lot of it is quite universal um it's sort of more there's there are cultural elements that 
I mean, maybe people, other people won't really understand some of them aside from Filipinos, but then there are things, you know, there's crossover with other Asian cultures or Latin American cultures. Sometimes I even think Latin American cultures are going to identify with this more than other Asian cultures, you know? Um, but I don't know. That's, that's a hard question, PJ. Yeah. I, I do love like, like, seeing um Dante's film and seeing the similarities and then kind of realizing like oh that is really Filipino maybe like you know like a you know a scene in a community center um the spam and all the food um you know there's there's just like a a humor to it a lightness to like a serious and like a like uh Martin's film is art film is a drama but you know there is a lightness to it that I think like you appreciate after seeing Dante's, like these are Dante's film, it's like, these are similarities. So I think, yeah, there are things that are inherently sort of like Filipino in the detail, but ultimately the story is universal. So, yeah. Yeah, Martin, there's actually, if you look at our films, like right, they're, if you guys haven't seen our films, they're completely different films, like yeah. <laughs> the different sides of work. But if you look at them side to side, they're actually, we're actually doing a lot of the same things in the movie. Like we're going to the yeah. same places, we have yep. the same family meals together. We're like, it's like next door neighbors, you know, but like one of them's having a very hard, hard time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, uh, there's a lot of things. If you, you both watch both films, like you were saying, for so that we are going to commit there. We're doing, uh, like characters are doing similar things yeah. in the movie, yeah. that's strange. But <laughs> yeah. it's very, there is a weird similarity. You can almost watch the films right next to each other. Like, yeah, they're doing the same stuff. These, so it is very Filipino, <laughs> like extremely Filipino. It's it's yeah. weird. <laughs> I mean, I would argue all three of the films also have characters that are struggling with some kind of internal conflict, right? Um, that maybe they're having a hard time kind of expressing somehow. So I want to turn to Kayla with this question about uh, you know thinking about your short film. Uh, what do you see as kind of like the Filipino-ness? I mean, it's learning Tagalog, right? Like how would it be different if we were, you know, learning learning Mandarin or something, right? Specifically Tagalog. So if you could talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, the Tagalog is like the nail on the head basically, but um, something I've just been pondering a lot just as a filmmaker has been, you know, the kinds of stories I want to tell. And um, I think often about like my parents and generations before me and how they come from survival or like this means survive. And I think about myself and how comfortable I've been living in America um, and how often I'm told like, oh, you're American. You're just, you know, you're so sometimes I'm told I've been white, for instance. Um, and I feel like I wanted to show like, I guess, the unique experience of like standing at the intersection of like my self-actualization as like a second generation immigrant and you know generations before me that have dealt with survival primarily. Um, and so I think that that's kind of a unique experience to kind of like see someone flail around in the mundane and boredom. Um, so, yeah. So I know there, um, there are some questions and I think you've answered a couple of them, but I think, uh, thinking about Filipino films, right? Or Asian American films um, in, this, in this moment um, and going forward, how difficult do you think it was or what were the challenges do you face sort of making these films? And is there something that's very specific to a film that is culturally specific like these, these ones um, that you have here versus other films that you've made or um, that were maybe not as culturally specific. Um, are there some challenges, opportunities, I think for particularly for filmmakers or creators out there who are probably in a similar place that maybe some advice or th experience that you can pass on? Um, well, I'll say, I'll say first, like making any film is probably the hardest thing in the world to do. It's just a miracle that any films happen. And, and of course the first barrier usually is financing and getting a film financed. Um, but at the same time, it's all so hard to make. Like you might as well make what the heck you wanna make. Like don't, you don't, don't worry about catering to what they're gonna do. Cause it's so hard to get the money anyway. You might as well like lean into what you actually wanna say. And I, I'm, I'm very happy that we're happy to be in this really amazing time. Uh, 
all these stories are mattering more. All of our stories are mattering more. People want to know about who individuals are, what individual cultures are. I mean, when I first got to town, people didn't even know what a Filipino was. Like, just was like a blank on their face. Like, what are you, the Filipino? So I think this is just a wonderful time that even big studios are listening and want to hear your stories and think it's actually more interesting the more, you know, the more specific we get instead of what it has been. Like, let's just make it bland. They're Asian American, all these Asians together. Like, the more specific you can get, the more people are getting piquing their interest on really finding out this this the specifics of of each culture. And you know, that's the digital age kind of helped bring that in. Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, um, Priscilla sort of mentioned earlier about us having to make a case this that this was a Canadian film because our public financing body here they only fund films in English French or indigenous languages and um, I kind of understand how that started but I think you know Canada has evolved we celebrate multiculturalism here Toronto prides itself on being the most multicultural city and um, this was our actual experience that we lived in households where Filipino was the second or first language. Um, so that was sort of the first hurdle. It, they didn't push back. They've been very supportive um, through the making of the film and through this premiere. Um, but I think our other challenge was just casting, you know, or even like, it was hard for me. I wanted a Filipino producer and Priscilla was like the only person in the country. And so I think now that we've, we've gone out and tried to you know we did a casting call we've met all these filipino actors and and ever since then now i've got ideas and i'm thinking oh like if i have so and so character i i'd love to work with that person and so it's kind of opened things up whereas before i had to like imagine a character and then pray that i would find them and that's kind of how it was with islands like i didn't know if i would get them um but now we have you know people that we have in our heads that we can go forward and maybe start making films and it's not going to be so hard the next time. Yeah. And, and I think too, like the more, like, I, I feel like the more parasites and the more minaris and, you know, like the more films, like those films and our films that kind of come out into the mainstream, like hopefully there's also like a comfort level in like reading subtitles and, and like watching films in another language too that, um, and hopefully those films are opening that up too. Cause I just remember, um, you know, it, it's not, it, it can be intimidating to the mainstream audience to see subtitles, but hopefully like that's kind of going into the mainstream and, and that kind of like relates to the financing and the marketability of these films too. If, if we do choose to make films in another language and other cultures too to to make films in another language but but hopefully we get to a space and a level in which um like people of color are being are continuously creating and like that they have the courage to to like you know shine in the industry and like pursue the industry and also in, in like actors and cast and and you know just just to be able to like participate um meaningfully so yeah yeah um man quite the answers to follow up um <laughs> so yeah I mean I guess like there was such a low barrier to like making the film that I made just because I was so scrappy made at home and I'd say I guess like the biggest challenge um was actually speaking all the Tagalog like I almost wanted to like just quit because it was so fucking hard um, and you know I think I like during dialogue recording like I just had a lot of feelings of imposter syndrome again um, in a way because I was like hearing my mom's translations and how eloquent they were and I was like stacking it against you know all of my internalized messaging of like oh I can't learn this I can't do this you know um, so that was really interesting I think that was the biggest challenge but um, thankfully I had my partner slash sound mixer <laughs> Um, I guess like defending my original idea from me and insisting that I keep going because he understood what I was trying to go for. So, yeah. 
Well, I think you sounded great. <laughs> you, you fooled me. You sounded you sounded like you were fluent. Um, uh, I want I want to let our guests know that we will get to your questions, but we're going to ask one more question. I have many questions for all of you, but I'll I'll try to limit it to one more before we um, open it up. Um, you know, I I'm thinking a lot about um, you know all of um, us, right? Are aware that. Um, Filipino identities are, um, you know, largely overlooked, underrepresented in films and media, right? Our stories are not being told. You know, thankfully everyone here is telling stories. So I'm wondering, um, knowing that fact, right? Um, and that is a fact, right? Like the fact that it's, you know, 2021, and this is the first time that there's, um, you know, three Filipino films, you know, two that actually feature Tagalog. Um, I'm wondering what that does to you as a filmmaker, like thinking about the types of films you wanna make moving forward, thinking about, do you feel pressures of, um, you know, having to create films that, um, you know, only portray Filipinos in this glorious light, you know, um, are there rooms for stories with, um, you know, characters that are deeply flawed. And I would argue that all three of your films feature characters that again, have these, inter you know, these conflicts that are very real and externalized, right? Um, so I'm wondering if we could speak to that a little bit, just the, um, you know, the kind of um, maybe pressures, maybe expectations, maybe assumptions, um, but how that fuels you as a filmmaker to move forward, right? And, and some of the work that you're going to make. Kind of a big question, I know. Um, and I'd love to start with um, Dante, if you don't mind. Damn, always start with me, PJ. Always start with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I started producing film about a decade ago, went from acting and, and, and took on another hat producing. And, and I solely did Asian American film. And I was like, my other friends and partners in the industry were like, what are you doing? Like 10 years ago. And it was just really important to me to kind of pay it forward for the next generation. We need more Asian faces in film to play three-dimensional characters, not just, you know, one-liners, uh, one scene, still a scene. I was like, that's great. And the industry has been really good to me, but we don't have enough of these faces. And it's beautiful to see what's been going on. And, and even me going back to the Philippines and into Asia and, and meeting these other actors that have these illustrious careers and going, why don't we have these faces in Hollywood? Because Hollywood is a pop culture medium. And that's my urge. Like we've all walked these the footsteps of white males for a hundred years and did everything. We need to do stuff with Asian faces, men and women. And that's kind of been my urge. So moving forward, things have been changing and there's so much more work to do. I mean, will I end up directing films that don't have, that aren't as Asian or Filipino representation in them. I, I really can't say, I mean, all the stuff I'm developing is still uh, putting those stories into the hat. And, and I don't say that because I wouldn't, well, of course, if, like some Hollywood films like, hey, you need a, can you direct the next Zac Efron movie? I'm like, okay, I, I guess I can. But I don't know, that's not like what I'm running to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm still running to put out and, and, and working to put more stories with our faces and our experiences into this thing that we call Hollywood and the pop culture machine because it's important. And the, what the stories we put out there, what the ripples are gonna be years to come. I mean, that's what I'm really interested in. I'm really interested in having the conversation. Like I said, the conversation for so long has been one-sided and now it's time for us to answer back and have a real dialogue through art. And I'm interested in having that dialogue through art. I'm not necessarily interest, as interested in just, you know, telling their stories necessarily. Um, not that I would totally rule it out, but that's not where I'm not, I'm not developing a lot of scripts like that. I mean, you know, there's interracial stories. There's the stories of a lot of stuff we're doing, males, females, but it definitely would have Asian American, an Asian perspective, a Filipino perspective more specifically. So. I'm still, you know, I'm still in my mind that's there. I love that idea, right, of films that create dialogue, right, create conversations. Um, how about Martin and Priscilla? What are your thoughts on, you know, moving forward in this moment? You go first. 
me. Um, no, I, I'm really excited. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think it was like, you know, I, when Martin had approached me about Islands, I was already thinking about like wanting to participate in films and produce films and create uh, work with Filipino um, characters. And, and, I, and I'm excited about getting to the place where you know, people are, can be developing scripts and that those universal stories that we're talking about can just cast a Filipino uh, individual. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it moves away from it being like too specifically about identity too. I think, I think there's something interesting about just like having a Filipino character and it doesn't necessarily need to be a Filipino story because our stories, like our films aren't necessarily just Filipino stories. So I think that's like what's exciting to me and like moving forward to that and just seeing more representation for all, all cultures um, in these universal stories is, is exciting for me right now. Yeah, I, so again, this is my first Filipino film. I made two shorts, they had white cast. And it's not something I was really thinking about. Like I, I wasn't intentionally trying to cast white characters. And I think I always like to think that I just didn't see color and it just didn't matter to me. But because of all of this public discourse about representation, it made me wonder like, okay, maybe it's because I'm only seeing one color. Like maybe that's, you know, that's all I've seen. So as I'm casting, I'm like, oh yeah, that you on screen look like a movie. You know, um, and so I'm still sort of thinking about all of this, like what what are the effects of not seeing enough Asians on screen? Like maybe I, you know, I grew up thinking I was going to go into business school or finance or something like that. And maybe I had never considered this as a career because I've never seen us on screen until I saw the debut and I saw Dante and that was the first time I saw like Filipino on screen speaking English. But I wasn't, I mean, I didn't grow up interested in the arts or anything, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm here because of Dante. Um, <laughs> but this is why it's important, right? And if, if we see a lot of Asians on screen, then maybe, you know, like our kids will grow up and it's, if they're going, hey, mom, dad, I want to do that. And you're like, yeah, okay, there's an industry there. You can do that. Not like, oh, I don't know. You know, it, it's not something you can do because you're not one of them. I agree. I mean, it's important to acknowledge, right? That statement of see it to be it, right? Mm. Like it, as soon as you see it, you know, you can be it, right? And so it's hard to, I mean, it's, it's important to recognize that and that you guys are creating work for people to see right? And people to think that they can also be, right, represented. And I loved what you said, Martin, about um, that idea of maybe thinking like, well, you look like you could be in a movie because that's what's been, you know, you've been surrounded by, right? So really challenging that narrative with the films that you're making, right? Mm -hmm. And without so, even knowing, like you don't think about it. Yeah, there's a huge, there's a huge social impact to just making these films, period, right? Mm -hmm. um, and getting it out into the world. Um, so thinking about that, um, Kayla, with, with your film, you know, moving forward, what are you thinking about in terms of how this moment is kind of pushing you forward? Yeah, I mean, um, getting my film out there and then seeing like um, Dante and Martin and Priscilla's films, like it's just such a validating, powerful moment. And, you know, it really encourages me to just like keep radically taking up space. And, you know, I can't like, I, I really love what you said, Priscilla, about, you know, wanting to sort of like shift into a direction where it starts to become less about identity um, because I would love to see like these films and not think that they're such novel experiences you know um, I think that's what I'm like pretty much working towards like basically allowing you know Filipinos to just exist on screen and be um, and have all these different experiences and nuances um, so that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> I think similarly coming from, you know, from the funding and programming end, you know, there are fewer people who look like we do on that side, right? And I think yeah. that when 
for me, like saying, oh my gosh, there are these films and immediately are drawn to them because uh, it's something I don't see um, every day. Um, those, those kinds of proposals, those kinds of projects. And it immediately makes me excited, but it also makes me realize how rare rarefied space <laughs> that is too. So trying to even get your films financed and made is one thing and then getting it dist distributed. And then, you know, I think, you know, kudos to all of you. And I think congratulations again to be able to come to this sort of more center stage kind of film festival and have the kind of response you're having, not only from the Asian American community, right? Um, from the community that you think would be more responsive, but to the um, communities at widely so that more programmers and funders realize these are viable, interesting projects. There is an audience, there are people who want this. Um, and again, they, they have to see it to be it. <laughs> they have to say, oh, I programmed it and it, it worked out and it's great. And it, it brought in potentially a new audience. Um, I, I can, you, they will feel comfortable making those risks again or making those choices again. But also bringing more people in the industry on, on those levels, I think is also very important. And I know our, our colleagues who put this together are, are part of that movement to make more decision makers um, in the industry look more like us and the stories come from the stories that we are telling, the world are telling. So um, I, PJ, should we shift to a couple questions? I know we're running long on time. Sure, we're running a little long on time, but at least let's get a one, one or two. Um, I think some of these have already been um, answered, but there's one question specifically to Kayla, but I would love to open it up to uh, all the filmmakers, but the use of humor, right, in, in your films, like where that comes from, where you see the use of it. Um, you know, this person specifically asked, like, do you have a funny bone in your family? But, but I do see, a, you know, use of humor in all of your films to some extent, right? Um, so maybe let's start with Kayla. Oof. Um, sorry, my cat has just been trying to invade my space. Um, Is that the cat from your film? That's a star cat. <laughs> oh, I think. Oh the no! Cat I think she just. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> the cat got mad and disconnected the computer. I think so. <laughs> the cat is the star. Uh, well, while we're waiting for Kayla, why don't we why don't we uh, go to you and uh, Martin and Priscilla? Why don't we start with you, um, and we'll circle back to Kayla. Yeah, because there are well, some comedic moments in your film, right? There's a gift, for instance. I see. I this is a problem. I think the film is way lighter and funnier than anybody else does. Maybe not funnier. I thought it was lighter, like. Yeah, I, I've, I've talked about, I think the first few interviews I, I talked about how this was supposed to be a really heavy film and I wanted to make something lighter and, and they were like, what? <laughs> um, so maybe, maybe Priscilla should, should answer um, this. Well, well, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, think, I think there's something, I don't know, I think we're just embracing maybe it's just like like our upbringing or it's our families but and there's like a campiness to to like that i love about uh filipinos and culture and filipino culture um but i think i think humor is important and i think it's i don't know i think it was just so natural i think for for these humor humorous moments because I don't think Filipinos are very serious people I don't know many very serious Filipino and I think they like we like to there's a lot of sarcasm and we joke a lot and we like dig at each other <laughs> in my family at least um but um but yeah I think I think it's something that that we embrace and that Martin embraced and um and it it just seemed like even in like your interviews um, Martin and just like talking about the film, it just seemed so natural to include those moments, and it it wasn't it wasn't meant to be, it, like it wasn't meant to be there to serve a purpose other than that it was it felt right, I guess. Uh, Kayla, you're back. <laughs> yeah, my cat we turned off the computer. <laughs> um, but I'm back. Yeah, of course she did that. Um, <laughs> Uh, humor. What are your humor, thoughts on yeah. humor? The use of humor in your in your films. You know, it's it's funny because I 
don't really typically go for humor in anything that I do. Um, and I guess like I, this was the first project where like I just gave it a shot and just wanted to be like stupidly honest and silly. Um, but I guess like as far as like my family goes, yeah. I mean, again, like Filipinos are not very serious people. They're always jabbing and joking with each other, which is like kind of like why I dread most holidays, but also get so excited for them. Um, but I'd say like if I had to attribute any specific humor or funny bone to anyone in my family, um, maybe my dad, even though I hate giving him credit for that because he can be so embarrassing sometimes, but I love him. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think some of my humor just comes from being on the computer late at night in my room as a teenager and just finding dumb things to laugh about, so. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Dante? How about the use of humor in your film? Yeah, I mean, my family's a rambunctious, funny ass family, which a lot of Filipino families are. I mean, it's part of our culture. I think everyone said it's part of our culture. We're very vibrant, funny, crazy, people that's part of it and my family's no no exception and then with that my brothers are some of the funniest people I know if you watch you know Derek's vignette and Dion's uh, genius comedians like you they're so funny it's like I don't even have to direct them all the time you know what I'm saying it's like put them in the situation and and uh and with Dion he has so much crap as a comedian he, he it's just he knows what's funny and he knows what makes him like what's funny about him he knows what's funny about the situation and he kind of kind of puts it there and uh and then just there's a lot of funny things about our community man about who we are we're 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 like we're asian but we're latino but we're in the we're in america but we're like we fit everyone we could fit into every situation but at the same token you know we're our individual self. I mean, we're like Asian, but we have so much Spanish, Latino. Like Martin said, like a lot of a lot of people, a lot of you know, the Latino culture is gonna really be into your film. I think they're gonna feel it too, and I, 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 that makes it interesting because I think we have that weird stuff that us that that there's a lot of that Spanish culture in us that has that craziness. That's like Mexican parties, Mexican friends come to Filipino parties. Like, yeah, dude, you're just like us. I'm like, yeah, we are. And, I, and it's funny. I mean, we're funny as people. Your movie was funny to me, Martin. It was heavy, but there was just ridiculous so stuff. That, that. <laughs> no, but it was like that deadpan humor. I'm like, I'm laughing, but you know, I, I feel guilty about laughing at it sometimes because you don't really want to laugh at your titos and titas or like an awkward situation. You're like, damn, that's real <laughs> awkward right there. But the dancing scenes were classic. Like all the dance, the dance scenes, I was like, damn. And not only the, the actors, I love watching the background actors who look like exactly my teachers and teachers at a dance class. I was like, she's feeling it right there. She's feeling it. I don't know what take they're on, but she got it. She got and the step. And she's they're, a real, they're a real line dancing class. I'm sure it looked ex really real. It looked like Wednesday yeah. night at the Phil Land. For sure, yeah. I thought it was a, I thought it was a Zumba class. My grandma did. That's what I thought that that's what it was. <laughs> that's great. Well, I think we're gonna wrap up. Thank you guys so much. Um, maybe one question is just for all of you: Where can we see this film? I know you guys all premiered online. That was the other thing. Premiering online is a difficult, difficult, you know. <laughs> spot for you all um, and that could be a whole another webinar about what happens when you premiere your film online but um, I don't know what's what's next for you all or what's next for these films do you guys want to do a quick popcorn on that and maybe where people can follow you mm -hmm. um so islands can still be watched viewed um at the at south by south by southwest so today's the last day to watch um, all of our films and um, you can, uh, in terms of um, where Islands is going to be in the future, um, please keep posted on our social media and I'll, I'll type it in the chat, but we are hoping for a like further festival circuit. Um, and yeah, like I, I, it's, we can't say anything right now, but, but hopefully you guys can follow us on social media and I'll put our, I'll put our, uh, or social media handles in the chat. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, hold on one second. I'm on mute. I can't unmute myself here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can follow us at Fat Filipino Bros on IG for all the info. And uh, I know for sure we're going to be at Camp Fest in the Bay Area. And they'll, they'll be doing some virtual stuff. But we're also going to be in a, uh, if you're in the Bay, there's going to be a drive-in uh, double feature with another Filipino film called Lumpia 2. So that should be a fun night at the drive-in in the Bay. And beyond that, I'm sure we'll do some festival stuff. And we're figuring it all out where we're going from here. But if you follow at Fat Filipino Bros, you'll get all the information. So for Learn to Dog with Kyla, um, it's going to be screening next at Aspen Shorts Fest and Atlanta Film Festival. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, and I'm currently in pre-production on a short um, that takes place in Southeast San Diego. It's kind of like a little stoner comedy at a Filipino Thanksgiving. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and I guess, yeah, um, you can follow me at my Instagram. Um, it's nanorisms, like mannerisms, but with an N. And I'll just put it in the chat. Um, but yeah. <laughs> And we've all been talking about our movies, but everyone should also watch PJ's movies. Yes. Because Call yes. Her Gunda, like that was amazing. Yeah, I love your work. I look Thank you. Thanks and, so much. I'm going to keep bugging you with questions about shooting. <laughs> sure, and, absolutely. And can I just add to, for all of us here, this was so great. It's exactly what we wanted to do as this kind of a Filipino takeover, but we're in a really interesting time right now for all of us Filipinos, Asian American, Asian Pacific Americans. There's so much that's going on. I mean, in the chat, we listed all the current uh, Filipino American films that are out there. Every, everyone from Ramona Diaz, Isabel Sandoval, Andrea Walter, who was also the DP on uh, Dante's film, Diane Paragas, uh, Patricio Janelsa, and AJ Calamai, and Marie Jamora. You know, these folks are doing things right now. So for all of us who are in this room, in this attendees, we need to know the names of who these people are so we recognize who our people are that are telling our stories. So we have to educate ourselves. And this is why we do these things too, because we have to educate everybody of what we're, what we're all doing. Who are our storytellers? Who are the people that are gonna be telling our stories? Because I do not want Matt Damon telling my story. You know, so we need to support all of you guys, we need to support everybody. I mean, someone else put in the Q&A about The Rock and his TV show, take a look at that. They look just as brown as we are and their nuances are so, you know, I think because we're all island, right? We're all Pacific Islanders. Take a look at that. Someone said, oh, you know, it's gonna be kind of hokey. I loved it. It feels just like my family. Um, it's on NBC. And then you take a look at all the other Filipino actors who are on TV, because right now TV is big, so like, uh, what's her name? Liza Lapira, who's in your film. She's every Sunday with Queen Latifah on The Equalizer on CBS. And then Conrad Ricamora, who is now on the Fox uh, TV show, uh, The Resident. Also, he also represents LGBTQ uh, folks because he himself is, is a gay man. And so everyone, and then Alec Mappa is about to jump on a brand new show that's coming out. So I think we all have to pay attention. This is our time. This is a great time. So we can't sleep on this moment. I think we need to just support and just know what everybody else is doing. So I appreciate all of you guys being here. I appreciate PJ and Erica sharing your time with us and encouraging all of us to do what we do. And so from, from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna say thank you. And I've been in this game a long time. I am an older, I, I own my elderness, so I will do that. And all I can do is support what you do and move over to the left and let y'all come through and then keep bringing people through because that's what we have to do. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Thank, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. All right, welcome. Thank you guys for all coming. This was really amazing to spend an hour and a half with my people. <laughs> it's like a family party. <laughs> Where's Olympia? <laughs> That's it. I'm going to I'm going to go to Dante's uh, uh, birthday party. Whoever. Who, who, who coming to birthday? Sorry, Ariana. Ariana's birthday party. Ariana's birthday party. Ariana's birthday party. Ariana's birthday party. Oh, she was the voiceover in your film. See? Yeah, uh, she was the voice. She was the voice. So we're gonna uh, come, we're gonna come raid that birthday party <laughs> with masks. <So> we, <laughs> but again, thank you guys for everything. This was a thank real you guys. Great.
Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Salamat. Maraming salamat. Salamat. Ingat.